Our bodies are made of various tissues and organs, such as the heart and liver, which in turn are made of millions of microscopic cells. In the nucleus of each of these cells, you can find a copy of your nuclear DNA, which is made from a mix of your parents' chromosomes and so is unique to you. This nuclear DNA is commonly referred to as your genetic blueprint, having instructions on how each of your cells, and in turn your physical characteristics like your hair and eye colour, should turn out. Also in your cells are tiny clusters of mitochondria, which have their own smaller collection of DNA. Mitochondrial DNA, however, is passed down through your mother's side only, and so is shared with your siblings and those further up your maternal line. Unlike nuclear DNA, it's generally agreed that mitochondrial DNA doesn't directly determine your characteristics. Its purpose is to form the power station to your cells, where clusters of mitochondria produce the energy that each cell needs to function. If our cells don't have enough energy, then the tissues or organs that they make up won't work properly, and sometimes they can fail completely. This condition, when mitochondria is unable to do its job properly, is known as mitochondrial disease. Mitochondrial disease is caused by mutations either in a person's nuclear DNA or in their mitochondrial DNA. Depending on the type of individual mutation, symptoms can occur at any age. They can be very mild or progressive, leading to blindness, deafness, dementia, stroke, major organ failure and sometimes death. Whatever the severity, there's currently no cure to this inherited genetic disorder, which affects an estimated 1 in 5,000 people in the UK. For potential mothers with mitochondrial DNA mutations, there are currently a number of options available. One, they can choose not to have children. Two, they can adopt children. Three, they can use a donor egg from another woman. Four, they can become pregnant and at about 11 weeks be tested for mitochondrial mutations in the womb. This procedure is called prenatal diagnosis. If it shows that the baby is likely to be severely affected by mitochondrial disease, they can then choose to terminate the pregnancy. Five, they can opt for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This involves a couple undergoing IVF, and the resulting embryos can be tested at just a few hours old. Then, only the healthiest embryos with the lowest level of mutation are returned to the mother. However, for a small number of women with more complicated mutations, these last two techniques are not appropriate. It's for these women that two new treatments are being proposed. Both treatments are at the early research stage and involve a technique called mitochondria replacement. That means substituting faulty mitochondrial DNA with healthy mitochondrial DNA from a donor egg. The first treatment is called maternal spindle transfer. It works like this. You begin with the intending mother's egg and a healthy donor egg. Inside both eggs is a spindle of chromosomes, which is what fuses with the chromosomes of a sperm to eventually create the child's nuclear DNA. In this technique, you remove the spindle from the donor egg and replace it with the spindle from the intending mother's egg. Now, when the egg is fertilised by a sperm, the embryo will have nuclear DNA made from the intending mother and father's genes as usual, but with healthy mitochondria from a donor, unaffected by mitochondrial disease. The other treatment is called pronuclear transfer. 
Here, you also begin with the intending mother's egg and a healthy donor egg, but you fertilise both eggs with sperm. When the newly fertilised eggs have become embryos of just a few hours old, the chromosomes from both the egg and sperm will have formed a new parcel called at this stage the pronucleus. You then remove the pronucleus from the donor embryo and replace it with the pronucleus from the intending mother's embryo. Now the reconstructed embryo can go on to develop, as in the other technique, with nuclear DNA from both intending parents as usual, but with healthy mitochondria unaffected by disease. These treatments are still at the early research stage, so what we'd like to know from you is, what do you think about this form of treatment, and about the social and ethical issues it may raise?